Hi, I'm Mr. Know It All, and I'm here to help you know it all too. Hello, fellow Know It Alls. I'm Mr. Knoll. This here is Kairu, and today I'm going to be taking you on a journey of what it's like being a Fulbright English teaching assistant. I was an ETA in Indonesia from the 2019 to 2020 school year. I taught at a public school in the small city of Payakumbu in West Sumatra. I got a bachelor's in education and history, but you do not need an education degree to get a Fulbright. Kairu, you're, hey, hey, you're messing up my script. Now, every single person's experience is going to be vastly different, but I'm here to show you some things that you can expect as a Fulbright ETA. Okay, so first we need to ask, what is Fulbright? The Fulbright program is the United States' government's flagship international educational exchange program. Essentially, for your understanding, the federal government issues scholarships to travel and live in another country to either teach English as a second language or pursue a research project while acting as a cultural ambassador to facilitate understanding between the host country and ours. Next, we need to understand what an ETA is. ETA stands for English Teaching Assistant. It's a job where you get paired with a school in your host country and you co-teach English as a second language with another local teacher who can also speak English. How to get a Fulbright. Basically, you will need a bachelor's degree. It does not need to be education or English related. Any bachelor's degree will do. You'll need three letters of recommendation and you'll have to write two single page papers essentially explaining why you want to be an ETA in that host country and how you will engage in the community to further the mission of being a cultural ambassador for the United States. For more information on that, click the link in the description. If you're still in college, talk to your university's fellowship advisor. My advisor was incredibly helpful throughout the entire process. I don't think I could have done it without her. Okay, so what you will be doing. You'll be teaching English at a random school in your host country. You do not get to choose the school you'll be placed at. And it's not always going to be a public school either. Many of the ETAs in my cohort taught at private or religious schools. You will not need to know the local language to do your job. All aspects of your teaching experience should be in English. However, of course you can learn the local language and engage with teachers and students outside of the classroom in their language. You will be submitting a monthly blog to the Fulbright organization highlighting your experiences or what you have learned. You will also create two community engagement projects. A community engagement project is a really cool open-ended project where you get to come up with an idea to get involved with a community to help improve or learn from them. Now, you're only required to do two, my projects were starting an English club after school, creating an environmental cleanup club, volunteering as the basketball assistant coach, and creating a camping trip for students in English clubs from four different schools in West Sumatra with tons of fun activities to complete in English. As mentioned before, you will act as a cultural ambassador, passively, by communicating and interacting with the people in your host community. You will be learning and teaching each other your values, our customs, and our beliefs. You'll get paired with a host supervisor. Now, every experience is different, but one teacher from your school who can communicate effectively in English will be your host for the year. They get selected for you. So some people really get along with their host and others do not. I had a wonderful experience with my host, Boo Erna, she really went out of her way to make me feel comfortable, safe, accepted, and appreciated. She would often act as a mother to me, calling to check in, offering food, and advising me throughout the year. However, some ETAs had horrible experiences with their hosts. Every experience is different, and a lot of really important aspects of your Fulbright experience are gonna be chosen for you, like where in the country you'll be living, what school you'll be working at, what type of housing situation you'll have, and who your host is. But as with everything in life, it is up to you to make the most of it. Bring a positive, open mind and smile while you're there. Things will work out with the right attitude. Okay, so before you go, you'll be given a TESOL TEFL course for free, which will give you the credentials to teach English as a second language. When you get to the host country, 
You will have about three weeks of training with your cohort where they show you proper teaching methods and you'll get to practice and train with your host. You will take language classes to understand the basics. And my favorite part is that they will explain cultural differences and make you aware of things to be cautious or sensitive about. This is a great time to get to know people on this journey with you. Your cohort will most likely be made up of incredibly passionate and intelligent people who will hopefully inspire and motivate you to do the most while you're here. However, for most of the year, you'll be alone at sight. You'll probably have a group chat to talk to them about things that come up, but most likely you will only see the people in your cohort during the initial training, the mid-year conference, and the end of the year conference. Some Fulbright programs might have unique activities that will also bring the cohort together. Like our program in Indonesia, called Aminef, had an annual words contest where students at our school came with us to Jakarta to compete in an English storytelling competition. So why do it? What do you get out of this? Well, for one thing, you'll have an adventure of a lifetime. You'll have incredible experiences that might be unique to the area that you're living in. You have the opportunity to really dive in and live in a foreign community. You will soak in some of the cultural customs, values, beliefs, and behaviors subconsciously by the end of it all. You might learn a new language through it. You'll find a deep sense of appreciation for humanity, as well as an acceptance for all of our differences. You'll learn to celebrate those things rather than being wary and supercilious of them. Fulbright was created so that US citizens could learn about other cultures, and you were to bring those understandings back to the United States with you and apply them to our communities here in the United States, hopefully making us more efficient, accepting, and appreciative. And lastly, you'll make some genuine, amazing, wonderful friends that you could never forget. Well guys, that's it for the video. I hope you liked it. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, I think we're good. Yep.